Welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today is February the 24th, 2021. And today I'm going to look at the gold ETF, uh, symbol GLD. G is in golf, L is in Lima, D is in Delta. I was speaking with a, with a friend earlier today, and we were talking about the volatility and some of these, you know, assets that are meant to be a store of value. And gold is one of those classic ones, right? You had, you know, always fiat currencies like the dollar were important. The dollar, the the pound, you know, uh, Japanese yen, uh, so so many others. Um, but people also held gold as a store of value long before fiat currency existed. Gold was there. And now we're seeing people, some people, making the shift to digital currency, which is making gold a little less out of favor. So uh, at the end of this video, if I don't take too long, we might actually look at gold uh, versus Bitcoin. And right now I'm looking at the ETF for gold, which in theory should trade very closely to the uh, front month gold contract. We can take a look at that as well. Um, but that being said, let's just go ahead and dive in to our usual uh, technical analysis. I'm going to get rid of the uh, volume. And if you notice, there are no earnings or dividends or anything because this ETF is meant to replicate uh, the gold future. So for those of you not comfortable with uh, dealing with things like expiration and first delivery dates and that sort of thing, uh, the ETF is certainly a better way to get exposure to the gold market without some of the risk of trading the futures if you don't understand. So we're going to go ahead over here like we always do, add in some moving averages. We'll do three of them, just the same. And since we're looking at the ETF, we can in many ways, look at this or treat it the same way we would stock. Uh, whereas if we were looking at the futures, I would still follow a similar process, but there are nuances to the futures market, uh, such as which month uh, of the contract you're trading um, that you have to be aware of. So we've got our usual 10 day, 20 day and 60 day setup. We'll start off here. Uh, and I want to take this out to about, um, what's interesting is gold did have the uh, pandemic um, fall, but it really came back quickly uh, when, uh, in many ways before the market did. So here we go. Uh, we had a crossover of the short term the over the mid, mid range and the long term back here in April 2020. We had a bit of a, I mean, a long trend higher. Um, this is actually good enough, a uh, good enough retracement for us to take a look at the retracement as well. But we'll get to that here in a second. We had a crossover, we had a crossover that occurred back here on August the 19th. And we've seen a bit of a downtrend since then. And right now, looking at things, and this is the daily chart. So on the daily chart, we are seeing the all all of the moving averages in line for a lower trending market you've got the 60 day higher than the 20 which is higher than the 10 day um, let's take a look at a lower uh, time a shorter time frame so we'll drop it down to four hours just to see if that uh, that bearish signal is confirmed and at the moment it is although the short term the 10 the 10 what do you call it? The 10 bar uh, <laughs> for life because this is no longer days. The 10 is lower than the 20, but it's starting to have a slope higher. So I would almost want to see a, a, a push lower there before getting into this. Let's look at it at the one hour. So in the one hour, um, they are all confusion. There's confusion there because you have the, the, the 20 period above the 10 period above the 60 period. So um, I tend not to trust or get involved until all three uh, all three moving averages are in line and ideally with a little bit of space between them just so that I can confirm the, uh, the that the trend is going lower uh, or higher for that matter. Let's take it down to the 15. So with the 15 minute, uh, more confusion, the 10 period and the 20 period are right next to each other. We can actually see um, 
with my with my cursor over the last data point, if you look in the upper left hand corner where the moving averages are, you'll see the actual uh, numbers. The the ten period and the twenty period are are even. They're at uh, one hundred sixty eight dollars sixty cents, with the sixty day at one hundred sixty eight dollars ninety cents. So, look at a situation like on this day back on February the twenty second. So just uh, earlier this week, a couple days ago at eleven thirty a.m. Look at how how much farther apart uh, each of the numbers were. So if you look in the upper left hand corner again, the ten day moving average was one hundred sixty nine dollars sixty one cents. With the 20 period being 168.61, a full dollar less. And then the 60 was 167.36. I mean, that's to me is that's that's significant. That's great. And I was looking in this region in case you never did uh, see the numbers that I was mentioning. So if you didn't, feel free to go back and watch this video again. So let's kick this out uh, back out to the one day chart. And what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and get rid of the moving averages, which seem to be confirming this uh, downward trend uh, at some of the levels. And certainly uh, this last period, this really this most recent period of upward bars, uh, upward days, up days are starting to uh, make the, uh, the, the 10 period and the 20 period come a lot closer. And, and I think it was the 15 where it was the exact same uh, price. So... Uh, you might want to wait a little while and see how that fares out um, before before actually putting money behind this trade or behind a trade uh, on this ETF. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the MACD. No surprises there. You had a big cross uh, back in at the beginning of this downward trend in August, uh, early August of 2020, and we've gotten. You know, we've gotten some crosses below the zero line, but we can tell this is still a downward trend, and I'm not quite ready to trust um, any of the signals, uh, any of the MACD uh, line crossing the signal line below. Normally, if it crosses below the zero line, that means that it's it's oversold and probably a good buy. But when we have such a powerful downward trend going, I'm a lot more cautious. A lot more cautious. Let's just take this out to the one hour. So on the one hour, um, you can see like some of this can actually work. I think if you're playing really short term, like you would if you were trading using this one hour, then maybe this indicator can work for you right now. Um, but but if you're looking at the daily, I would I would hold off. Um, but yeah, it seems to be kind of spot on for the for the one hour. Um, even here, you've got a little bit of a sell-off um, happening uh, at on the 23rd of February, uh, which was, um, this was at uh, essentially 14.30, so that's yesterday afternoon. Let's take it to the 15-minute. We're just going to kind of cruise through this. 15-minute has a lot more gaps in the data, and that just makes a lot of this, uh, the calculations and whatnot of this MACD, um, just a lot more spotty. A lot more spotty you can see how it jumps on these gap move days um, it's really hard to trade that because one moment one moment it looks like we're about to cross the zero line and go lower the next there's just a, a pop higher because of this gap here so um, it's always good to know how um, how these indicators react uh, for the various for the various companies that you're watching so they're gonna they're all going to work out a little differently. They're going to look different. Now, like I said, we're going to take a look at a little bit of a Fibonacci retracement. And I don't want to. Well, you know what? Let's see. We might do a big trend, a big one. Let's do that. So we're going to take a look at this larger trend higher, which started back in May of 29th. Oh, sorry. Started back in September of 2018. So this is a huge move higher. And I want to see where we are in this retracement. We're on the one day level, uh, the one day charts right now. Uh, one day bars rather. So 
We're going to go from, uh, I'll take this low point back here mid-February. I'm sorry, mid-August of 18. Take it all the way to the tippy top of that. And then I'm just going to drag it over to include all of our data. So there we go. All right. Well, didn't mean to put that one up there. Let's click this here. There we go. All right. Um, so for this large trend from 110 all the way up to uh, 100, what would that be? 194, uh, 54. Um, that's a pretty good move for an ETF. $83. I mean, just shy of a 100% uh, move. And we have had a retracement almost to the 38.2. Now, I am uh, looking at, I'm looking for areas of, of significance. So maybe this 38.2 area um, has a bit of a, let's see, this is, the low here is 166.03. The high here is 164. Let's do that. 164.43. I wanted to see how far apart. They're about two, uh, two dollars apart. So I'm looking at you know the possibility of there being some resistance and support lines there. Um, and that's one of the best parts about the, the Fibonacci analysis is that you really do get to take a better look um, at these at these companies. Let's do something different. I'm going to get rid of this one and we're going to draw another one. But this time we're going to do it basically since 2020, uh, the recovery from from the what do you call it from the pandemic of uh, sell off that we saw. So we're going to go all the way to the low here take it to that high and just drag this over and see if there's anything worth noticing. So what do we have? Uh, look like the, oh, I need to tighten that up a little bit. Looks like the 23.6% level uh, was an area of both a little bit of support, a little bit of resistance. Um, we've got the 38.2 in this scenario being support mostly support and it fell through here recently so i imagine it'll become resistance and we just about touched the 50 percent retracement of this of this uh of this move since last april so um you know that's really interesting the other thing that's interesting is look at this 61.8 and how close it is to the support uh that we saw back in april and june of 2020 so I just, I'm not saying that these numbers always play out, but I want to be aware of where some orders might be and where uh, support and resistance might be. So that is it for those three. I'm going to do something I normally don't do, and we're going to uh, actually just compare compare these things. So first off, I want to look at GC1, which is the continuous, uh, the continuous contract for gold. I'm just going to put that right on top of it. So you can see what this means uh, is that this ETF actually tracks very well with gold. We would hope that, but you can't always assume that um, that it does. And that lets you know it's doing its job. So we're going to get rid of that. Next, we're going to look at GLD compared to uh, Bitcoin. I have to shrink uh, some of this down a little bit. Let's see. All right, it's not uh, not giving me my usual amount of control. So um, we're gonna remove that. Um, I have looked at that before and it, it was actually spot on for quite a while. It probably lines up a lot better with the gold futures contract rather than this ETF. Um, so. That really is it for, for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Definitely hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. And uh, stay tuned because I will be posting some more videos here in the next day or so. All right. Take care. Happy trading.